Hey there YouTube, this is Sean. I'm gonna be teaching you today how I edit travel videos. First thing that I do is I get all my footage, I copy it off my SD card from my camera and I put it on an external hard drive and then I import it into Final Cut. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do after we've copied all our files onto our hard drive is open up Final Cut. And then I'm going to create a new event. And one thing that I do is I film in uh, 60 frames per second. So usually what I'll do is I'll set it up to be done in 24p so that I can actually slow it down and it gets some pretty good slow-mo shots and so uh, I, when I create the event I'll also name it everything else looks pretty good and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and what that does is it's gonna create the event and it's gonna create the project that I need so once I've done that I click on travel vid from my event folder that's right here and then I'm going to double click on my project file that's right here and I could name my project as well travel vid so once we've created our event we want to actually import the files that we need into the folder so we're gonna go file import media and I'm gonna scroll down to my external hard drive here and pick the footage that I want. Now if you if you didn't know this you could actually uh, if you select the first movie that you want and then hold down the shift key and then scroll down to the last one that you want it'll select all of those movies. So once I have those selected I hit import selected And that's going to drop my footage into that event folder and we can start dragging it down onto the timeline and actually editing it. Alright, and once you've imported your videos that you filmed, uh, they all show up in your event folder here. And you can actually scroll over these. You can kind of skim over the videos to kind of mark in and mark out. And so really that's some of the first thing that I do when I go through and I edit a video. I want to grab all the good clips out and then later on if I want to trim those clips even more I can or if I want to slow them down. So that's really the first thing I do. So uh, just to give you an example, uh, we're going to look at this shot right here. Not a great shot. I don't really want to use that one. This one's okay. Um, maybe get him jumping off the tree. So I'm going to mark the end point by pressing the I key and that sets an insert point and then the out point and then I want to drag that clip down here if it's really small clip you can actually zoom into it a little bit and the way you do that is hold down command plus or command minus and that zooms in or zooms out on the clip that you're editing and right here you can see the audio and you can also see what's happening in there. Uh, depending on what kind of audio you have, you may want to use it, you may not want to use it. In this particular video that we're going to make today, I'm probably not going to use a whole lot of audio that's actually from the camera because the wind was blowing. Another thing is you're importing these files and you decide that maybe you want that to be a slow-mo shot, you can select it and then hit automatic speed. If you set your project file up right to 24p, if you've filmed in 60p, then or 60 frames per second, then it should slow down and it should look really, really smooth and nice. And that's what that should look like. So I'm gonna zoom out so that clip is not so big. So I'm just browsing through the clips that I have here, grabbing the clips that I want if there's a clip I really don't like then I don't use it but lots of nature shots and, and as I'm going through these shots I'll describe to you that uh, one of the things that I really 
try to do is film from different angles and get down low on the ground, get underneath something, um, just change the perspective a little bit. Most of the time when I'm filming, my camera is almost at my waist level and it just gives a different perspective to things. It's kind of like when you're a kid and everything looks a lot bigger than it really is. Uh, so coming up with creative ways to view shots, getting close to things, uh, showing detail, those are things that I think are really important when you're making a travel video. It doesn't always have to be a wide shot. It can also be a tight shot on something. I'm not gonna show you all each and every clip that I trim because that would be really, really boring. So I'll, I'll just show you how I do a few and then you kind of get the idea of how I grab these clips. So once again, I'm marking the end point by using the keyboard. I is uh, the insert point and then O is the out point. So I look at the clip I want. I out. And if you didn't know, you can also use the space bar to play or pause in Final Cut Pro. Generally, I don't like my clips to be longer than than four or five seconds. And most of the time they're, they're two or three seconds because to me that makes your video more entertaining. And once we put the music in, this will all make a lot more sense. I time my videos according to the music that goes into the videos. So at this point, I've thrown down a lot of the footage that I really, really like from what I filmed today. The next step is sometimes the hardest part because really to me what makes a good travel video happens to be really good music. I try to actually cut the video and cut the frames at different spots so that it matches the music, if that makes sense. And if you're wondering, well, where do you get your music from? So Epidemic Sound is one of those and you can get to them by going to epidemicsound.com. Really, when you find some of the songs, you can actually preview them and if you like the way they sound, you can download them and use them. Some of them are actually broken up into something called stems where you can use different uh, layers from the song. If you just want the drum beat or just the bass line, you can use those sorts of things in it. Or just go onto YouTube and type in vlog, no copyright music, and do a search for that. And what you'll find is this site here. You can click on their channel and you can look at some of the music that they do have. It's all copyright free. So let's say maybe you really liked this song. This isn't the song that I'm gonna use, but let's say maybe you did. All you gotta do is go over here and copy the URL. And once you've done that, I use a program called Video Converter Ultimate. I think there are probably other programs out there that you could use, but this is the best program. I use this program all the time. Almost every single day I use this program. And so all you have to do is copy the URL and then go to paste URL and that's actually going to download the, um, the video in there. Or you can actually, if you don't want the video, obviously you want the audio, uh, just go to uh, YouTube MP3 and you click on that and it whatever URL you copied it goes and it gets the mp3 from YouTube uh, and strips it off the internet which is really handy. I've already picked some music for this one. I'm gonna go into media import and I'm going to actually import the music that I want to use. But once you find the file you just import selected and that's gonna import that file And then I'm just going to drag the audio down here onto my timeline. Kind of see how it matches up with my video here. Okay, so I'm going to try to match the video with the audio. And I'll hit the space bar at the beat where I want it to stop. So if you listen, there's an actual beat. Okay. 
So if we change on one of those beats, it's better. Sometimes you give it two beats, sometimes you give it four beats, depending on what you want to do. I'll just give that one two beats. Two beats again on that one. And then what I'm doing is wherever the cursor stops, I'm dragging that clip to the cursor so that it changes with the music properly. So I'll hit spacebar to play again. And I hit spacebar to stop it. I'm gonna grab the edge of that clip and drag it all the way to the point where I want it to stop. Once again, drag. I'll make that one shorter. Kind of nice to not always do them the same length because it gives some dynamics to it. Gets a little predictable if you do the same thing every time. Okay, I'm gonna actually lengthen that one a little. And some of these I'll slow down. Like I said before, I set this project up in 24p, 24 frames per second. And so if I go to highlight the clip and I go to the speed setting here I can go to auto speed automatic speed and that slows it down and let's say maybe I want to speed it up too so maybe maybe I want to do both so I want to do and this second part maybe I want to speed up so all I got to do is cut the clip and I can go here and I can change it and I can make it twice as fast. So it gives it kind of a little speed ramp to it. So there we go, we got our beat. So that's where I'm gonna cut it. One, two, three, boom. I'm gonna cut right there. I'll move this to match with the cursor. I'm gonna do this one a little different. And I'm going to change every beat for, for three counts here. You can see the music down there on the yellow spots right before it's, it's close to clipping. It's not clipping, but... See, that kind of matches the music. The little melody that's playing. And then we'll change it once more. So don't want to get this other piece right here. Slowing these down makes them smoother. So if you do have something that's a little shaky, slowing it down actually helps a little bit. Once again, we're changing with the music. You can hear it. Slowing it down, speeding it up, making sure that you're matching with the music. That's what makes it interesting to me. I'll just set it right, boom, right there. Where we come through this door and I'll cut it. And then right here, I'm gonna speed this up where I want it to stop with the music. So, boom, where the beat drops again, right here. And then I'll slow down this last piece. thing to know if I grab the clip here I'm stretching the clip if I grab the clip in these these time frames right here on the top that are colored I'm stretching the speed of the clip all right so we've imported all of our clips we've sorted through them we've pulled the ones we like down onto the timeline 
We've synced it up as close as we can with the music where we want it to go. The next thing I'd like to do is actually add transitions to the video. You can make your own transitions. You can actually film your own transitions the way you move your camera if you want to do it that way. But I like to use uh, Pixel Film Studio to make some really good transitions, trans zoom and things like that. And so I like to use some of those in my my videos. So. I just look for parts where the music changes big and I put some dramatic transitions in those parts. So for instance, if I drag this one right here, this would be another good clip to use the, the dolly zoom effect on. So let's try that again. I select the clip, I go to crop, I'm moving forward, select Kin Burn, so I want to make sure that my start point is already zoomed in. So my zoom is moving back as I'm moving forward. That's how the effect works. And let's give that a shot and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that one's really trippy. And some people like to do a crossfade at the end of their video. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. So at this point, we've got all of our transitions, we've got all our clips in, we've got them cut the way we want them, they match the music. So the last thing that we want to do is, I like to use, uh, they're called LUTs. It's a way to kind of color grade your footage to look a little bit more cinematic. And instead of having to do that on every single clip, I just select all the clips and then I right click, new compound clip. And what that does is it creates basically one big clip out of all of your your footage instead of a bunch of cuts and things of that sort um, if you have to undo this you just double click on the compound clip and it'll take you back to where all the cuts are uh, you can do your own own color grading um, but most of the time i don't want to spend a lot of time color grading so what i do is i use a program also by pixel film studios that's that's called let's uh, cinematic and or cinematic LUTs and so I go down to some of my overlays here and select that and all I gotta do is drag this over the top and I highlight my clip then I go into the place where you can actually adjust and pick the different LUTs I have all these different ones that I can choose from uh, there's a few that I really like to use that are cool uh, with outdoors type stuff but really all I do is kind of scan through and find one that I really like. I think I'm gonna go with this one. It's a cross-processed setting. I like the greens and the blues to really stand out. So I'm gonna use that one. And once I've done that, the last thing I do to try to make my video look cinematic drops a letterbox over the top. So I'm going to go down to my overlays that are here, click there, and then go down to letterboxes right here. I drag that over, and then I want my letterbox. Select your clip, and the letterbox setting will show up here in your editor window and I want to do 2.35 to 1 and that kind of gives me that widescreen cinematic feel to the video that I filmed. At this point of your video you can add text in if you want, if you want to add text or you don't want to add text. I think I'm just going to go ahead and render this one the way that it is. And uh, to do that, just in case you didn't know, I usually put my cursor all the way to the beginning of the video. I go to File, Share, and I generally share these as Apple devices 1080p. Uh, I think it compresses it fine. It works good for YouTube. The video will begin to render. You can actually uh, label it. I'll just label it Travel Vid. Click Share, and then up here is going to actually show you your progress on how long it's going to take to share your video. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. I hope that this has been enlightening for you as far as what to do to make a really great travel video. 
Um, remember some of the tips that I had go through and sort through your videos before. Make sure that when you're filming that you're filming dynamic shots and different angles and being creative as you're filming and that's going to help your video to come out better. And then making sure that you match up the music to match with your video. Uh, with timing, with dynamics, with changing the speed. And then lastly, just that polishing touch of adding uh, some color correction or some LUTs to your video. Especially if you're using multiple cameras that, that don't quite look the same. It gives it a commonality to it. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you leave some comments, give me some tips. If there's something you want some help with that I can help out with, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day.